Hello humans, Batsy here with another create video. Today we have a new project at hand, something I'm really excited about. We going to work on a new expansion, and that means we need a new power plant, which also means we have an excuse to try a superheated steam engine. I have wanted to automate the industrial area for some time now. The problem is that I always find something else to do, or get distracted with other stuff, just like right now. To automate the industrial area, we will need many redstone components. We going to need redstone links, pulse repeaters and emitters. Many latches of both kinds. You get what I mean, it's a lot of stuff. So I thought, because we are very often crafting create components, it's about time we make a manufacturing area. And that's what we are here for today. We going to prepare the area I have behind me to test if it's worth it to use a superheated steam engine, and to be able to have all the manufacturing machines in the same place. A little spoiler from editor Batsy here, if you came for the schematic, it means that it is viable to run superheated. So stick around, I will explain in a bit how to set up the schematic in your worlds. While I was working with Damdra on the trains, I ended up falling into the lava pit. Thankfully I didn't have a whole lot on me, and I was still using unenchanted gear. So, I decided to come here and test the XP farm. I build it, and I might be the one who still hasn't used it. I just bought a bunch of gear and enchants, we going to see if we can get the rest of the enchants I want, and of course, the XP levels needed to put them all together. Let's get started, shall we? Looks like I'm not getting any luck finding protection for. It feels like sometimes the farm gets soft locked somehow, I will have to tweak the redstone a little bit. Yes, now we talking. I think I'm slightly far away. There we go, now we making progress. Finally, I found one protection for. Okay, it doesn't have anything else, that's fine. And the chest also has one, perfect. Let's try unbreaking then. Nice nice, that's what I'm talking about. There we go, finally got the last protection 4 I needed. Now it's just a matter of combining all the enchants together and putting them in all our gear. Not bad not bad, it took me like 6 minutes or something to get it all together, that's pretty good. Finally, won't be mining with unenchanted tools anymore. I'm pretty happy with this XP farm, I need to polish the redstone a little bit, but it's honestly so convenient. Now back to the manufacturing area. Sorry little fella. Alright, that's two. First try, I'm so good at this. And two in here too. And that's the last one. I guess I will bring some seeds and start breeding them all. The sugarcane seems to be backing up a lot, is the mill that full? Yes, that was the issue, this poor mill can't keep up. It should be fine once we place the speed controller. Alright then, we are almost done. I just came back from breeding the chickens, and the area is pretty much ready. It took a little bit of tweaking stuff around, and adding many details I didn't put on the original design, but I think it's about time we have a little tour around the area, and see what I have done. Let's start with the station. Damdra has been working on some trains that will move around the server. This one takes lava from the pit I made in the industrial district, and moves it here to be used on the steam engine for now. Might have more uses later on. 
All that lava will then be stored in this water tower. I'm not super convinced with the design, but I think it fits well with the area. And it also has a little depot here to fill up buckets if we need to. Before we move further, the station also has a way to unload items. For now, that's only used to unload netherrack, since we produce the cakes with it. But eventually, it will feed the entire area in case we need to import other materials for manufacturing. Next, we have the steam engine, but before we move to that, let's see how we getting all the materials to feed the burners. Down here we have all the sugar cane, which turned out to be way more than we need, like a whole lot more. I might end up using half of this area for something else instead. At the back of it, we have all the chickens. I had to clean the system a little bit because I breed too many of them, but this is producing a lot of eggs, more than what we consuming so far, which is perfect. All those materials get moved along those belts, and eventually go up here into those vaults. You can see how much sugar we have already, it's quite the overkill, but the eggs haven't stacked up yet, it won't happen till the cake vault is full anyway. If we check the other side of the vaults. It's a bit cramped in here, but it does work perfectly. First, we have this corner where the netherrack gets converted into cinder flour, which then gets fed into the basin. At the other side of it, we have the vaults we saw before, which feeds the basin with the eggs and sugar. All of those materials get processed into cake bases, which then get filled with lava to become blaze cakes. You can see how many of them we have stored already even while the engine is already running. It's been working wonderfully. In this last corner over here, we have a chute that feeds the engine with cakes, or alternatively, we have a second setup that feeds it lava buckets, that's in case we don't have any more cakes, it will still generate a decent amount of power. Up here you can see how we have one of the arms with buckets of lava, and the other with all the cakes. And of course, the blue blazes which means they are superheated. As for the engine itself, is fairly simple. There is a windmill at the top of it, that is only powering up the pumps, to feed water into the boiler. It does require two of them, but it's not too much power anyway. On each side we have all the engines, there are 12 in place, which isn't needed, but I wanted to make it look symmetrical. And this little display that shows the status of the boiler. That's pretty much all the technical stuff we have done so far. Create mod aside, I do love how the design turned out to be. Sure for now it looks weird that is such a massive empty area, but this will get pretty busy soon, and it's still missing the building that will cover all the manufacturing. The train station also looks fantastic, especially the entrance of both tunnels, I'm really happy with how those turned out to be. On this side of the track, it's missing the actual train station, not only the tracks for it. That side will be more for passengers, leaving the other side for the supplies and whatnot. I think raising it all from the ground was the best idea, especially when we are using the underground part too, and I think the station will look more unique this way. But all of that will happen at least in the next episode, if not later on. For now, let's check on that steam engine schematic I was talking about. In case any of you humans want to use it on your bases too. I came up with a fairly compact design that sustains itself, at least everything except for the netherrack which isn't renewable. Alright humans, we are here in the creative world. The design looks a bit different, but it works just the same. I just compacted it all up. Let me explain a little bit about the differences I have made with it. First, we have the windmill, which I have swapped a few blocks here and there to make it more simple. But it works just the same, it's powering up the pumps to feed the water. It's set at 256, but anything above 180 works fine. Next, I moved all the engines to one side and placed only 9, since that's the max amount needed. You can connect your factory anywhere you want, just keep in mind the engines need to be connected together, otherwise you taking power only from a portion of them. Next, we have the chickens. This is pretty much the same as before, we have a bunch of them to produce eggs. All I did was place them closer to the engine. Then we have a barrel for the netherrack, which doesn't sound like a lot but it does take a long time to consume, so a barrel full is plenty good. These two stacks, almost three, that I consumed already, this is after having the engine running for a long time, to make sure it was sustaining itself, and we still have this many cakes stacked up. 
it might take an entire day to go through that barrel of netherrack, but you can always place down a vault if you want. Then we have the sugar cane. I reduced it to this much, and I haven't had a problem so far. It looks like it's producing mildly more than it's consuming, but feel free to add more if you want to. It's using this portable interface to move all the sugarcane into this mill, to be processed into sugar, and stored in the vault. The setup is as simple as it gets. The vault doesn't have a lot of sugar, but considering how many spare cakes we have, I think it's perfectly fine. You can see on this side where all the materials get combined to make cake bases, which then get filled with lava and stored in the vault. All that lava comes from this side of it. And I know what you might be thinking. This is enough lava to feed three entire steam engines level 9, which produce more power. That is 100% true, unless you have an infinite source of lava, or you don't mind having this many cauldrons, you are probably better off using the normal setups, but if you want a cool steam engine, then this works perfectly fine too. It's just a few cauldrons, after all. You just copied this schematic into your world, but have no idea what to do next, well you're in luck, let's go over the basics of how to set this up. First, we should move up here, and activate the windmill. By default it will be offline, just right-click the windmill bearing. Then we come here where the first pump is, and we fill this up with water. If you are in survival, aiming at the boiler will work just fine. Then we move to the next pump underneath, and fill it up with water, just the same. Now we go underground and fill up with water all those slabs, as well as plant all the sugarcane in place. With that done, we can now activate the minecart and let it run for a while. I will leave it on an assembler so the cannon brings it too, you will have to make it a contraption first. If we go back to the surface, yes, we will need to fill up this entire area with lava. It might take a bit, but you need to fill it up entirely with lava sources. You can always put some of them and use the cauldrons below to fill up the rest. While you fill up the lava, you can go ahead and start breeding the chickens. I recommend doing something like this. Luring a couple of chickens, or getting them with eggs. Then simply breading them all until you have many, I would recommend breeding till they start dying by entity cramming. After that, you can place a glass or something on top, and remove everything else. I think it looks neat this way. And that's pretty much it, once you have done all of that, the engine should be able to stay online for as long as you want. Also, keep in mind that all of those casings are purely decorative, I like how it looks on the floor. Feel free to use anything else you prefer instead. In the beginning, you will have to run this speed controller at 32 speed, at least until you have one single blaze burner running, after that, you can go as high as you want it. And that's pretty much it for this episode. I hope the humans enjoyed the new project we just started, I'm quite hyped to start automating some stuff, especially those redstone components. For everyone else that came for the steam engine, I hope the schematic is useful, and that you all enjoy this little setup I made for it. Tier 18 setups might be an overkill, and completely inefficient, but they are certainly really fun to have around. And honestly? It looks really cool for a single boiler setup, better than having several tier 9 boilers in a row. Anyway, I hope you all had fun, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see the humans next time. All right Jimmy, the tanks are full, we can go now. Jimmy? You know how to drive this thing, right? Right? Oh dear gods, he doesn't know how to drive this thing, and I have no idea either. Oh wait, he is driving, we are moving. Oh dear, I'm not seated, wait Jimmy. Jimmy! Wait for me Jimmy!